Wes Craven's New Nightmare is an endlessly clever film which examines the blending of horror films and reality where Wes Craven brings Freddy back to his original dark and less comedic tone in a story about how Freddy has gotten so menacing that he jumps in the real world to go after the original film star. What is this, a good movie? Well, now I am angry. Go back to being silly so I have something to complain about. Heather Langenkamp, Nancy of Parts 1 and 3, returns to the series playing herself, and the film has all kinds of appearances from other people behind the series also playing themselves. Even Freddy's appearance got an upgrade to a much larger, more demonic force, this time with a long trench coat and knives that stem from the bones in his hand. This definitely predates Jacket Jason. The movie opened to glowing reviews from both fans and critics, and is regarded as one of the best entries in the series. <laughs> Whatever. Gonna be hard to top this. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little soul, too. <laughs> Clearly the most frightening entry in the series. The movie's use of in-jokes and references to the series and the overall meta-nature makes it seem like an almost proto-scream, which Craven would do two years later. See, that's how you get us critics to like slasher movies. Just reference that slasher movies exist. This movie better be good. It pushes two hours long, and you know how angry I get at length. Go fuck yourself, Red Knights of the Gestapo. Gee, I wonder which DVD exclusive episode I watched this week. The movie opens in a similar fashion to the original Nightmare on Elm Street, only it also plays as a gritty reboot to Bicentennial Man. Turns out this is behind the scenes of a movie production, and whatever it is, it is such a knockoff of Mahakal. Who the hell is making this movie? Holy shit, it's John Carpenter! The movie incorporates some things from Heather Langenkamp's real life, such as her being married to a special effects artist. Given how much of the movie revolves around her son Miko Fullhouse, it's almost like Craven even wanted to make a better version of the dream child. Do unborn babies dream? And who could improve on that masterpiece? See, this is why we don't use real possessed hands. I told you CGI was more dangerous than the real thing. Craven warned us the computers would kill us all. Turns out this was just a nightmare. But apparently the Earth was having a nightmare too, and it is pissed off. Another thing Craven incorporates is footage of a real-life L.A. earthquake in 94, although not the big one. Their son Dylan has been watching too many scary movies. He's making Jack Frost in his cereal. Uh, not creepier than these harassing phone calls Heather has been getting. God damn it, Grady! And why is Heather cheating on Glenn? Glenn is real! This is exactly why I don't want to live in L.A. <laughs> Freddy's gonna fuck that house! And Saturday morning kids shows there are wildly inappropriate. Dylan, I don't want you watching this. Well, he can't watch part three yet, he'd just be confused. Even though the concept of New Nightmare comes from Craven's proposed idea for A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, no clue if that meant more or less Larry Fishburne. Maybe the title would have been When a Freddy Calls. Hello? One, two... You didn't even let him finish! Hello? Freddy's coming for you! There, now she can go on about her day. Where there's a When a Stranger Calls reference, there is definitely a babysitter. Come on in, there's no way you're making it through all of this. Can I make you some eggs? Uh, hang on a sec. Leave us alone, you son of a bitch! <laughs> there, now how do you want your eggs? Heather is off to an interview and gets a ride from creepy limos. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take my chance with a crank caller. You played that girl? In that movie? Why, yes, I am Jamie Lee Curtis. And now we have a TV show host who may be creepier than the crank caller and the limo driver. Boy. That's right, you have a little boy. What's his name? Dylan. Don't ask that question in a room full of people dressed as a child murderer. 
Another instance inspired by real life with interviews where kids dress as Freddy. Hopefully the host was better in real life. And how about your co-star in the original in Nightmare One? Would you trust him alone with Dylan? Look, what I'm asking is would Robert Englund murder your child? Oh wait, don't answer that. He's here. Same thing happened on CNN's interview with the Pope. God, kids love me. I'm the world's most lovable child murderer. I feel bad for the one kid dressed as Buck from Eaten Alive. I, on the other hand, dressed as Fly from Big Wednesday. Look, Heather, you need to get out of there fast. The juggler killers are on the loose. They suffocate their victims with bowling pins. Heather has a meeting with, oh my god, the lecturer from part four. This movie has everybody. Actually, that's also producer Robert Shea. Why did I just actually myself? He also played the ticket seller in part six. Maybe that's why Freddy's Dead is the one he has framed for whatever reason. But let's talk movies. How would you like to join us in the definitive nightmare? I thought you killed Freddy off. <laughs> yeah, like tons of times. Wes Craven is apparently in the middle of writing a script due to some nightmares he's been having. That's the same thing that caused him to do Music of the Heart. Constant nightmares of being strangled with a violin cord. This seems like a good idea. But I have a kid now and... Well, so? So I'm, I'm not sure about doing horror. Oh, come on, Heather. Kids love horror. Until they all started being PG-13. See, look at how much Dylan loves horror. Yeah. God damn it, did you show him The Shining again? Freddy can infiltrate the dreams of toys now. That's why G.I. Joe woke up with a Lincoln log in his ass. Fuck whatever movie you're making, get home now! Okay. I'm coming home. I'll be there in three hours. You're two blocks away! Here, let's read you a much nicer story. Hansel and Gretel! A good parallel to how old fairy tales were akin to the horror films kids love today. Then quickly Gretel came behind and pushed with all her might, plunging the wicked old woman headlong into the flames, banging the door shut and bolting it tight. The witch howled! Stupid, creepy old fairy tales! You're only watching the Care Bears from now on. There's no telling what this kid is gonna pick up on. Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. And no more Schwarzenegger movies either! Unfortunately, Chase dreams of, uh, what was his name? Gil? Sure, Gil. He dreams of Gil's death from part five. Only with significantly less murder cycle. It shows that you can have a better movie while also having special effects that aren't nearly as good as the lesser movies. Ironically, the bad special effects are happening in a death scene featuring a character who is a special effects artist. <laughs> I'm sure he's fine. Heather Lyon, Ken? Your husband's dead. Also, I loved you on Friday the 13th. Chase may be dead, but saddle up, Glenn. We're ready for round two. I've been to way too many hospitals with dead bodies just laying around in the hallways. On the plus side, she's there on the one night that they're not fucking the corpses. Damn it, it's not him. We still don't know what happened to Dr. Neil Gordon. The funeral contains cameos from the previous films, except for Johnny Depp, who Craven was too nervous to ask. He was in part six. I'm sure he would have done it. They should have put Tuesday Night in here twice, just to say that she's also playing Patricia Arquette. And damn it, Rod, I thought you were Grady at first. Everyone's gonna wish they attended this funeral. <laughs> And not the strangest funeral I've seen lately. Hello, baby! There were no Big Bopper references at Chase's funeral. Rod chose not to dress up. He didn't even know who Chase was. He's just here for the free crab cakes. Oh, great. It's that channel that shows nothing but Elm Street 24-7. USA Up All Night didn't have much variety in the later years. I want this same type of movie to happen. Only with the kid watching his mom's deleted scene from The Outsiders. He's gonna join a street gang. 
On the flip side, Heather is praying to God he doesn't see himself in Pet Cemetery. Mommy's not making it out of this one! This is the liveliest playground I've seen in one of these. I contribute that to the lack of creepy dead kids playing jump rope. Though I wouldn't trust this guy. But with John Saxon here, something menacing is gonna happen. This is just how we played on equipment back in the 80s. A playground wasn't a playground unless you could easily die on it. Oh, wait a minute, this isn't the 80s, this is the 90s. Eh, things were probably dangerous then too. Then he broke his mom's back. So much for that new Freddy movie. Who else could we talk to from the funeral? If there's anything I can do, Heather. Anything. Thank you, Robert. I knew it. All horror icons are terrifying in real life. We need to talk, but not over the phone. Can I come over? Um, actually, uh, Heather, uh, today's no good. There's, um, there's something I have to finish. Robert is also having nightmares. The dreams are telling him to make another 976 evil. <laughs> Dylan is getting very antsy, waiting for Mom's episode of Perversions of Science to come on. Freddy's hand in this film is sort of like a cross between his glove and the possessed hand from Part 2. That would make me scream like Jesse. Ugh, Dylan's being weird again. Can I go back to the nightmare? Seven, eight, better stay up late. Dylan, don't sing that song. I told him not to watch Pet Cemetery. Didn't anyone learn from part five that you do not give birth to a children of the corn? Fortunately, Nancy wakes up before realizing this is actually just because he watched the Conan the Barbarian remake. At least the kid is good at jumbles, I guess. Dylan. Never sleep again. Never sleep again. The fuck you do to her Bible? Worse yet, she finds out Dylan is very allergic to references of the first movie. The phone, however, isn't. It just came. Too bad for her, she takes Dylan to the nosiest, most nanny state doctor in the country. You haven't shown him any of the films you've made, have you? Well, just Nickel Mountain. And just because Lynn Shea is here doesn't mean it's the best hospital. Lynn doesn't play herself, so given that she's in the first film, she just has a doppelganger. Dr. Charles Fleischer was on call, bothering the guy who plays me in real life. The doctor feels like a representation of the horror films are the real cause of everything bad happening to our children crowd. Though horror films may have made Robert England go crazy. Hi, you've reached the England residence. We're out of town right now. You can leave a message if you wish, but uh, we'll be gone for some time. Even his answering machine is sinister. I can relate to this. My answering machine has me giving the caller a very negative review. Heather seeks help from Sean Cunningham, who suggests that Freddy is an evil entity who was held captive by the Nightmare series, and now that the series is over, that evil is crossed into reality. This is an easy fix. Put him in another Fat Boys video. That'll quiet things down for a while. This is all the source of Wes's nightmares, which are inspiring his new script, where real Freddy is haunting Heather, his original foe. Give me the alternate version where he haunts Mark Patton. Reality has become such a part of the script he's writing, right down to saying the exact lines from the script. When that time comes, you're gonna have to make a choice. Choice? What kind of choice? Whether or not you're willing to play Nancy one last time. Sorry, already booked for a sequel to Fugitive Mind. And when I say Scary Freddy comes back into the series with a vengeance, I mean it. As if he's talking directly to the audience. Miss me. I knew once Freddy came out of the closet, he'd be quick to show off those kicking new leather pants. Creepy Freddy, it's been a long time. Enough of you, Freddy. Time for the real villain. Doctor Films are the root of all evil. She's busy writing her thesis on how show dogs is totally about child grooming. 
She's such a parallel to overbearing parent groups, that's all she talks about. You have let your child see your films, haven't you? My son is wrapped up like a sandwich. Can we talk about your moral crusade later? <laughs> Great. Now he's moved on to dreaming about the Shining miniseries. Damn it, Freddy is real. The ending credits say he's playing himself. And now he's gonna kill the guy who plays me. Anyway, you're under arrest, ma'am. No one under 17 watches R-rated movies in this county. The doctor is so powerful, she has her own police force to detain people over movie taste. Damn, this is a tight ship. It's just a little shot to see that he gets some sleep. No, his mother specifically said... I said no. Do it. Ow! Dr. Giggles runs a more trustworthy facility than this. The real horror seems to be whether or not they can get out of this hospital alive. Have you been suffering from any delusional events, Miss Langenkamp? It's okay, you'll make way more off of this lawsuit than you will the Freddy movie Wes is writing. Sure, sure, Scary Freddy is in the hospital, but the babysitter wouldn't make it out anyways without being locked in hospital jail for the rest of her life. This is why kids should not watch Nightmare on Elm Street. Your babysitter is going to get tina to death. Now the doctor is going to blame the whole thing on Lionel Richie's dancing on the ceiling. With Dylan missing, only one man can help now. John, it's Heather. I need your help. Why? What happened? John motherfucking Saxon. The doctor already has her diagnosis. Watching the movie Fearless definitely caused this. It's a strong testament to the script that it can still be compelling while having some, um, distracting effects. But the multiple Freddies is, uh, nice. The movie even starts becoming the first film right down to the dialogue. Fred Krueger did it. Yeah, sure. The movie universe, like the dream universe, has completely taken over in that John Saxon actually becomes Nancy's dad. Nancy, pull yourself together before you make yourself and that kid nuts. I guess I could have written this episode to be about how the review begins haunting myself and then the review starts to turn into the review of the first movie. But I don't want to. He begins even calling her Nancy, but the weird part is, it's because this is in the same continuity as that Nancy and Tanya bio she was in. You'd think they'd have steel mattresses now, given how this happened in the first one. <laughs> Asshole! Even the music shows back up. Wait a minute, that doesn't seem right. It also turns into the other fucked up children's story, Hansel and Gretel, only with sleeping pills being used as breadcrumbs. Freddy is definitely gonna have a date with an oven. At least this dream comes with a fun slide. Heather unlocked one of the hidden levels of Hydro Thunder. Why are they on set of Tiberius's Grotto? Please tell me the kid wasn't watching Caligula. I've been joking about this for years, but it's refreshing to a scene where the script actually does show up to give them pointers. While the trench coat is a nice touch, it's definitely a fire hazard in this location. Oh, I, look who I'm talking about here. It's fine. Except when he makes me shit my pants! I'm mad that Freddy's scary again. When is he gonna refer to his hand as the power glove? Freddy is that evil being who preys on children like a witch. Make sure you use your Hansel and Gretel knowledge to defeat him. You know, the Bugs Bunny one. You gotta turn Freddy into a female rabbit. But we've completely forgotten that he has Mr. Fred-tastic powers. Well, these are better special effects than this next part. <laughs> Newer isn't better, 90s effects. The tongue effect works, though. Joke's on you, they're gonna give you something sour. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> <laughs> too spicy. Wait, you mean fire could have defeated Freddy this whole time? <laughs> mm, not 
not the same without it being in 3D. I don't remember this being the reason for the fall of the Roman Empire, but if that's what Wes's dream said, then who am I to judge? They wake up to the script of the film itself, no creepier than Hansel and Gretel. We open on an old wooden bench. There's fire and tools, and a man's grimy hands building what soon is revealed as a... Wait a minute, this is just the script of the Demolitionist. Uh, Heather might as well be in that one too. While Wes Craven's new nightmare was a return to critical acclaim for the series, the movie unfortunately brought in the least amount of money for the series at the box office. Because of course it did. Of course it fucking did. What the fuck? Too bad the movie ended before we got to the part where she reads him about his dad's death. That had to be awkward. Wes Craven's New Nightmare is an extremely original, creepy, and entertaining entry into the series, which brought in new ideas and themes that had been lacking in some of the later films. It plays with fan reactions to horror films, moral outrage, and ties it in nicely to old fairy tales. Which means I've got nothing else to say. Every movie I watch should be bad, and I should never have anything good to say about them. Phooey! Uh, this is a restricted area. Do you have a pass? Screw your pass. It's all right. Rock, rock, Sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash stoned gremlin productions. Follow us on Twitter at the cinema snob or check out our homepage at the cinema snob.com.